Hello, this is Vincent Salvillo from Double Exposure, and I'm here with Frank and Dan DiLorenzo, the team responsible for R&R &R Games, one of the longest, well, biggest, well, one of the companies in the gaming industry. So our chat tonight is going to be mostly centered around their feelings towards the COVID crisis and the associated uh, lack of socialization that we've got because for anybody who knows Frank and Dan, they love to be out and about playing games with people, joking with people, having fun with people. And unfortunately that's kind of been robbed from all of us. So without further ado, Frank, why don't you start? Tell us a little bit about how COVID has affected R and R first of all, and then Dan, if you want to add some things to that. Well, I mean, the biggest thing, obviously, is it's cut out all the shows that we used to go to. Um, there's literally nothing that we're going to this entire year after COVID shut everything down. Uh, plus, we can't really congregate. Uh, we shut down our entire playtest schedule um, because we couldn't ask people to get together to play test games. So uh, those kind of things have uh, put a damper on things, but, you know, we just turned around and did other things. We spent a lot of time on development and uh, basically fine tuning a lot of the games that we've been working on that we hadn't had time to really focus on. So they're uh, getting lots of great attention now. So it's, uh, you know, it's a crazy world we're living in right now. And this is a double edged sword. There's a lot of good that comes from it for us and a lot of bad, but uh, roll with the punches, they say. Well, from my perspective, it's it's pretty much the same. Uh, I spent the majority of my time traveling around, going to all the different shows. Um, but one thing that I've noticed is I spend a lot of time talking to retailers. And when the COVID hit, I began calling um, different retailers from all over the United States. And it was interesting uh, the dynamic that evolved. A lot of the retailers were extremely concerned for their business. Many of them felt that they had to shut their business down. And I spent a lot of time talking with them as saying, um, you know, it, it's just something else in life that you have to address. So rather than shut your business down, you have to become a little bit more creative. Um, but there's been a lot of success stories. Uh, there's been a lot of uh, retailers that, you know, had never done something like uh, film themselves and, and do, you know, quick blurbs about specials of products that they had in their stores. And so I worked with a lot of them and showed them that that can be a very powerful medium. And while your store doesn't have to be open, um, you know, curbside pickup could be very valuable for you. Um, the story I, I'm going to share with you is a uh, Rubens, uh, toy store in, um, in Nevada. And I've known uh, Ruben and Dixie for many years, and they're a wonderful couple who run this adorable store. And uh, they really felt that they had to close. And, and I showed to them, I said, you do so much for this community that I think what you should do is you should basically talk about your troubles and your, your, your struggles that you're currently having and see what happens. And their community just came, came out in droves. And they've uh, really sustained that, that activity of that small toy store. Um, and, and they realize how important they are in their community. And they've continued now to do all these different things. So, so Ruben, uh, who loves to work with wood, um, he cuts out these little um, wooden giveaways. And so he puts it outside the front door and the children can come up and, and they can take a piece of wood that he cuts out in a variety of different characters each week and then they have an activity to do like they can paint the wood and he'll you know show them how to to uh you know put a, a design on that wood so that they have something that they can remember that moment by um and it's only really uh you know ensconced themselves in that current marketplace in nevada so so there's a lot of good that's coming out coming out of the of the pandemic um Obviously, it's it's hard for us. We we have some exciting games that ha we had just uh, had come out, 
and so a lot of people still haven't seen them, and that would be Coralia and uh, Humboldt's Great Voyage. Um, Bite Your Tongue is another one that uh, we released just before the pandemic. Um, so I'm spending a lot of time talking one-on-one -on -one with the retailers and, and their customers. We're doing a lot of uh, Zoom sessions, Skype sessions, and uh, trying to promote sales you know, as organically as we can. I remember uh, two years ago when Frank was thinking heavily about Bite Your Tongue, he would pull people, we were at BGGCon, he would pull people into a, an empty hallway and say, what do you think of this? And start doing the movements with his tongue. Nobody knew what was going on and they would all just think he's coming on to them or something like that. <laughs> but apparently the research worked because you've got uh, quite a hit game on your hands. Great. Um, and by the way, Dan, it's Nevada. You know, you got to learn something from the 2016 election other than everything sucks. What do you mean? What did I say? Nevada. Yeah. It's... They, they spent hours telling everybody that their state name was Nevada. Oh, okay. Nevada. 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 <laughs> so, Frank, I see you've got uh, one of your newest unpublished games yet uh, coming out soon past the pot right next to you. Why don't you tell us a little bit about it? This thing? This thing. Well, this is the one that we, uh, we're going to release this year, and uh, it uh, kind of got slowed down by COVID, so we took our time and really fine-tuned it. But uh, it was a huge hit for us at Toy Fair, and it's mm -hmm. finally coming in this month or early November. Early November. On its way here, so it's getting here. But it's just a, a simple uh, dice game, a little family-style game, uh, press your luck. Um, comes with some dice, custom dice, uh, a bunch of chips, and uh, this awesome little tin right here. So super portable, take it anywhere and play it. You know, it's a 20, 30 minute game. There it is. Maybe you can show them what the chips look like. I can. So you get three different types of chips. You get a, uh, a one with a value of, uh, of one unit, three units, and then five units. Your visuals are stunning there, Dan. Yeah, it's fantastic. <laughs> well, I'm, I'm, I'm getting them out. So the red is the one unit, and you can see the one. The blue is the three unit, and then the green is the five unit. Um, and then the dice, you have two sets of dice, a green set and a blue set. So these are six-sided dice. However, there's no number six on these dice. In place of the number six, you're going to have the letters P, O, and T to spell the word pot. So whenever you roll uh, the P, O, and T, you, it's an instant win for you, and you would win that round. What if I roll top? If you roll what? Top. No. If you roll top, it, it doesn't count. You have to roll pot exactly. Okay. But yeah. what if you quickly switch the dice around after you roll top? Well, no, you can't, you can't handle the dice after you roll them. That's, that's cheating. But, but some, from somebody's perspective at the table, it's going to spell pot. Well, it depends. If somebody from the other side of the table sees that it's, it's, it's not top to them, but it's pot, then they can yell it out and they can win. Oh, okay. Is that in the rule book? Then that brings up the problem of what if it's opt? Well, if it's opt, then nobody wins. It's yeah, got to be all opt POT. out, right? Right. It's going to be POT. <laughs> So one of the interesting things about Pass the Pot is that I, I actually, you know, was one of the people who playtested it with you live. And as Frank was saying, playtesting is really tricky right now. You guys used to be all over the place playtesting stuff. Um, so I've been online with you playtesting one of your newest creations. Tell me what the online world, the virtual world, is doing for you right now in terms and how it's different from doing things at conventions and playtesting. Well, it's a no lot. Way. It's a lot different it's uh it doesn't work for every single game uh it has to be a very specific type of game that uh you can play online in a situation like this you know where we would see the board and you know one person would be moving all the pieces um so not every game can be tested that way because it just doesn't apply but uh we did have a few games, particularly you know, the one that we're working on now, that, that fit perfectly. And we have tested the heck out of it. So uh, we've basically just tried to knock out every possible flaw from the game and make it as perfect as possible. 
and uh, I think we're very close, and it's probably going to be a release for 2021. It's terrific. Hopefully, 2021 brings a lot of good stuff for everybody. Oh, it will. It will. We certainly have a few games that are already arriving at the end of this year, including this one. And uh, one big one that we have that was supposed to, again, be this year, but we, we pushed it back a little bit just to, to do some more final tweaks to it, make it even better. Yeah, Dan's being kind of subtle there. Um, Dan, did you want to tell us something here? Well, this this is a game that is arriving in hopefully four weeks if we get through customs all right. But uh, this is the roll and write of Rajas of the Ganges called the Dice Charmers. Mm -hmm. So this should be hopefully in stores uh, right around the first or second week of uh, November. And Ganges is one of your more expensive games. How much is this one? This one's going to retail for $19.99. Oh, terrific. I'm sure Ganges fans will be very uh, pleased to see it. And I, I assume it's a simpler game. Uh, it's, a, it's a traditional roll and write, yeah, so. Sure, it's $19.99. Um, I'm pretty sure it's 22 Well, now he's just said it, so that's it. you got to change all your prices. I just said it's 22 It's the expansions well, that are 19 which we do have another goodies box of expansions coming out. Okay, that's good. That's good. Um, Frank, how has uh, COVID affected you personally um, these days, and in, in terms of you know the outside of R and R, I guess. Well, I've become a bit of a hermit. <laughs> don't go anywhere. Uh, you know, don't see many people other than online, like this, and you know the occasional person I interact with at the door. But yeah, I basically, you know, stopped going anywhere, stopped uh, being around people, um, just work, 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 because I don't trust it. I don't feel like it's uh, very safe. And for those of you who don't know, Frank's in Florida. Um, how do you feel being in Florida when it became, when it was the epicenter a couple of months ago? Uh, you know, what can you say? I mean, not everyone listens and uh, follows you know, the protocol, but uh, it's a terrible thing. It really is. A lot of people have died. Yeah. And uh, I've seen families affected by it, and it's not fun. Yeah. So I'm hoping that uh, we all get it under control sooner than later. Very soon. Dan, you're up in New Hampshire. How are things by you, and how has it affected you personally? Um, I'm very much an extrovert. So uh, for me, not seeing people and being around people has been uh, difficult. But every day, um, we take a drive. So I load Luna, my wife, and sometimes my daughter. We go in a car, and we just drive just to get out and, and about. Um, the people of New England, uh, specifically of New Hampshire, have been really good about wearing their masks. So I haven't really felt uncomfortable to go out, um, you know, to go to the supermarket, uh, go to the post office, because everybody's observing their, you know, their social distancing and wearing masks. We have had a spike um, recently in um, New Hampshire, which is kind of frightening. Massachusetts has been struggling for a bit. But because I'm not traveling anymore, I've actually really enjoyed being home and I've gotten a lot of things done that basically I couldn't get to. So I've done a lot of home renovations. Um, I've done a lot of uh, yard renovations where I've done some significant landscaping projects. I'm doing one right now that is uh, extremely Regretful. late. What's that? Regretful. Yeah, yeah, it's actually turning into a regretful event. It's, uh, it's uh, I'm, re I'm replacing a retaining wall. Um, I live on a hill, so I have a very, very steep hill, and this retaining wall basically keeps, you know, dirt and uh, stones from crashing into my home. Mm. Uh, it was made out of uh, timbers, and the timbers were attacked by uh, ants, and um, so I'm replacing the timbers, and it's... Uh, it's just become a difficult project. So I work early in the morning. I work late at night on it and, uh, you know, weekends. And as I take it apart, 
I'm require, you know, I'm, I'm discovering that I need to do even more to, to rebuild it properly. So yes, the dreaded New Hampshire timber ant is voracious. Yeah. So, I, I don't know what, what, you know, I think they're just carpenter ants that, uh, allegedly are not supposed to be eating pressure treated wood, but uh, they have literally, I, I have removed timbers that are, uh, are a shell, basically. There's nothing in the inside. They're just, uh, they're just a shell. So a um, lot, lot of, uh, it's I don't been- You call them termites, but. <laughs> yeah, no, these are ants. I don't think these are termites. We have termites, but these are clearly carpenter ants, so. Really? Yep. Wow. Yeah, so, so it's a lot of work and- um, It's a professional job. Well, to give you an example, I, I, at the beginning of the project, I realized it was probably more than I could do. And I had some people come out and give me estimates and two people didn't even want to, they, they, they saw the project and said, I'm not, I'm not interested. And they walked away. And then the other people were giving me, one guy gave me an estimate of 49,000, but one guy said 122,000 and one said 136. And so I was like, forget wait, it. All. Wait, what exactly were they doing for that amount of money? Replacing the the wall and and um, pouring concrete. So that does not sound reasonable. Yeah. No. No. But uh, it, he lives on a steep hill. Though. I I do live on a really steep hill, and machinery cannot get back there. That's the problem. Wow. So so no, I'm having fun. I mean, I like to do stuff like this. It's just more than one person can handle. I'll tell you a funny story. I hired my neighbor, a 21 year old kid who's out of work right now. Mm -hmm. And I said, well, I'm going to, I need some help to carry these timbers up the hill to the backyard and I'll pay you a certain amount of, per hour. And so the delivery comes and it completely destroys my yard, just dropping it at the bottom there. But so the kid and I start working and after the third one, he's leaned over and I'm thinking he's having a heart attack. And I'm like, are you okay? He goes, yeah, I, I just need a minute. I just, just a minute. And it was like five minutes and you know, you know me, I'm impatient. And I was like, okay, you know, it's going to get dark here and we have a lot more to go. But to his credit, he stuck it out. Um, I think halfway through, uh, apparently I didn't look so good. And, and my wife had suggested that we should stop. And I said, you want to stop to the young man? And he said, no, let's just finish it and get it over with. And we finished it. And so, um, so now I have this cute little pile of, timbers in my backyard that I'm dreading to start to move into the wall. <laughs> Just in time for winter. Yeah. Yeah, they're good while they sit there. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so. so that's what I've been up to. I mean, I've done a lot of home projects, which I like to do. Um, and I'm enjoying the play testing. Uh, I just, uh, I've had a chance to do a lot of in-depth play testing and I, I enjoy it. So Frank and I look at things a little bit differently from games and you think so, <laughs> but yeah, I mean, I, I think I'm very excited about the one we've worked on a lot. Um, we've brought in some other ones that we've looked at quickly and I think we're both excited about. Um, so there's a lot of opportunity out there and uh, yeah, next year should be a big year for you guys. Yeah. Um, with any luck, we may be going back to physical conventions, hopefully by next summer. I'm being optimistic about that, I know, but uh, I'm really That's hoping tough. that Gen Con can happen. That's about the most realistic possibility so far. Yeah, absolutely. So one of the things that uh, I miss personally uh, is going to the conventions and the late night Pichu games and just the hanging out you know, with everybody at the conventions. Uh, and I'm sure you guys do too. And just uh, recently, uh, Virginia and I and uh, the two of you have been playing Pichu online and uh, that's a lot of fun and it, it's uh, you know looking at some of the platforms that we're now uh, using through the gateway uh, obviously we've got Coralia up there and um, some other people have gotten some other of your games um, up there and uh, we're working on Humboldt right now to see if uh, we can get that going um, Sorry, what, Frank? Pike is up there, too. Yeah. And soon to be Rome as well. Yep. Um, so uh, the online experience is not, you know, the same as being in person, but we've had some good laughs and, and um, you know, it's working. So once a week or so, we'll play. Um, what, other, what other online games are you guys playing with other people and other friends? So I've been playing... 
I've been playing on on board game arena and right. I learn potion explosions and I'm really enjoying that. Um, but it's turn based the way I'm playing it most of the time. So every once in a while I can get somebody to play a game and on board game arena that probably takes 25 minutes. So I enjoy that. Um, I have been playing tissue on another site and uh, that's, I think that's about it really for me. Um, Wait, you found another site? Yeah, yeah, I have. Okay, all right, I'll remember that. I'm trying to get my rating up. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's that's very important these days, of course. Uh, my my uh, favorite was when we started trying to use uh, board game or uh, not board game tabletop tabletopia for um, for uh, teach you and. I could not figure out the physics in there. We have dropping cards all over the place and yeah, eventually said, yeah. yeah, forget about that. Yeah. <laughs> so. Yeah. So, um, guys, uh, we have an audience here. Does anybody have any questions for Frank and Dan and what they're doing? Yeah, I've got one. Oh, okay. Frank, Frank's got a question. Go ahead, Frank. I just, I was just being facetious. Oh, okay. Well, Frank, Frank does not have a question. All right, um, Paul Inchow says hello, by the way. He's uh, in the audience here. Hiya, Paul. And I'm sure he's uh, trying to get as much social interaction as possible. Hi, Paul. As we all are. All righty. Um, so obviously from in the R&R &R history of things, uh, Hanabi is probably the, the game you're best known for. But- really? um, I think I think Hanabi. If somebody says R and R Games doesn't know anything else about your company, Hanabi is probably it. But really, uh, really, yeah. Even 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 past Times Up, Times Up would be a, a good second. But everybody seems to know Hanabi. But other than those two as your staple games, what are you most excited about in your line? Like what really, uh, what what really do you feel most proud about in in your line over the over the last uh, say five years or so? Last five years? Last five years. Since you since you met me, which is really all that's important. I, I have some definite answers, but I'll let Frank go first. Well, there's so many. I mean, I love first and roll. And the first we had fun with first and roll. Yeah. <laughs> such a blast. It's so much fun. I really Frank and I argued for, for hours over the pass rule that ended long up. Long bomb, yeah. <laughs> the Vinny Long Bomb. Yeah. But, uh, you know, there's just so many games, and I know which one Dan will say, but. I Why don't you write it on a piece of paper, Frank, before I say it, I and then do. we can hold it up after you, I, uh, you can hold it up after I say it, and we'll see if you're right. Um, but it's uh, like Table is Lava. I love that game. Uh, another fun, fun little game that's, you know, done really, really well. I'll tell you what. Let's do the top three. We'll do the top three of the last five years. Or, or seven. we have a few questions is after we're done with this. Only the last five years, or is it just in general? Well, I, I'm asking about the last five years. I just want to let the audience know that there are questions. We'll get to them as soon as we're done with this. So, last five years. Yeah. Well, there's my top. At least. No, my... no. You're you're writing down what you think I'm going to say. Yeah, but I, I wasn't thinking, you know, last five years. I was thinking in, in general. Let's just see how well you know. For the last five years? Fine. Okay, here we go with the last five years. All right. Hold All on. right, so I, I'm done. I've written my answers. Oh, this pen doesn't work. Hold on. All right. And then let's just do a bonus game, Frank. Okay? What is the all-time your yeah, I already got that one. All-time favorite uh R, R game? For you? Yeah, I got it. Okay. Um, so I've written my answers down. Uh, last five years again, we're still doing that. Oh, god. Um, you have to look around. I see you looking around, Frank. Yeah, I mean, you know, he hasn't memorized this stuff five years back. You'd think he would memorize it, but uh, I'm, I'm gonna also, I'm gonna, down. I'm gonna put an honorable mention. Is this three I'm writing down. I wrote top three. Then I wrote all-time favorite, 
And then I'm going to write honorable mention. Oh, I don't know. I'm just throwing names down now. And this pen doesn't work either. I got to get new pens. Oh, look at the excuses are starting there. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know what he's doing? He's writing it on multiple pieces of paper. <laughs> and then when I say it, he'll go, uh, yes, I have that here somewhere. Oh, here it is. I'm correct. I have no idea. <laughs> I just put three names down just for the heck of it. The first three, I... I could for the heck of it, yeah. All right, so here's my all-time favorite, and I hope I hope Stephen Glenn is listening because I absolutely love Spike. Um, Spike is a game Not that in the last uh, five years, though, unfortunately. What's that? Not in the last five years. So. Yeah, it was. It was Frank. It was not. 2014. 15. 2014. Okay. Well, we're gonna we're not gonna argue that, but okay. it's 2000. It's oh, we're arguing. No, I'm correct. So that would be my first one. So Spike so, is, a, is our I'm train sorry. game. I'm still speaking. Oh, my God. <laughs> now, hold on a second, because I have something to say about that. <laughs> All right? I met you at Gen Con 2014. Right. You did not yet have Spike. No, we had it ready, and it was coming out for the next Gen Con. Yeah, the yeah. next Gen Con, which was 2015. 2015. Yeah. It was ready. It was going to the printer. All right. Well, anyways, last five years, one of my all-time favorite games. So for those of you that don't know, it's a game by Stephen Glenn. Uh, it's a, uh, a pickup and delivery train game, and uh, it's, it's centered around the eastern seaboard of the United States. And it's just a fun game because every player gets a uh, – they're in Illinois, game. eastern seaboard. <laughs> what a I want some of those <laughs> Illinois clams. Hey. You know what? I'm still speaking, Mr. Speaker. Moderator, I'm giving you so you much mic. You just mic. I mean, you have overrun like by four minutes at least. Because I have the interesting things to say. Oh yeah. Show Anyways. us those. Show us those chips again. Come on. Here's the red one. Just for the record, Iowa Stock Car says Spike is in my top twenty favorite games. Ooh. And they're talking about top twenty altogether. I do love that game. It is one of my all-time favorites. Oh, now now he likes it. Okay. And, and Paul Inchow just said Spike 2014. Why do you think well, I greenlit? 4KD uh, is not the ultimate that? resource for when a game was released. Just so you know. Yeah. That's all a right, good so point. what – did you have that as my number one, Frank? No, no, not at all. Not because it wasn't the last five years. Try and focus <laughs> on the last five years. <laughs> okay. My number two game is by Brett Myers. And oh, that's wrong. Yeah. yeah, totally not on my list. No. Okay. I did not think you would name that one. Oh, uh, I, I. I do will know play, you love that. I do know you love that. I will play yeah. Rome wherever I am. I, I just absolutely love this you game. Play Rome you know, while you're roaming. I will play Rome while I'm roaming, or I'll play Rome while I'm wandering. Would you play it in a house? Would you play it with a mouse? I would play it in a house. I would play it with a mouse. All right, next game. So my third game is Ulm. Ooh, another good oh, one. That's a surprise. Uh, yeah. Another one of my all-time favorite games. Now, I will say that as an honorable mention in that time frame would be Cole Baron. I, I, I love playing Cole Baron. Um, it was 2014 Cole Baron. Yeah, yeah, right, because library. you introduced it at Gen Con 2014. This is what he does. He goes out of the range. <laughs> Who is the rules of the game? That's fine. That's fine. Okay. I'm so, surprised that you didn't mention the number one that I put on my list for you. Show it to us. Cave paintings. That's yeah. your game, Frank. Dan, actually, 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 found that game. I found that game. And I found it with you down in New Jersey, Vic. Right. So, wow. <laughs> yeah. No, yeah, I, I love, always thought that Frank was hotter on that than you. I love that game. It's no, I love cave paintings, but uh, the games that I bring out all the time, to play would be these three. Right. Now, I'm going to give an honorable mention, and this is totally sincere. It's not going to sound like it, but this is totally sincere. This is a game that's been released well outside of the of the five year period. But I love Frank's game, Home Stretch. Frank Home created stretch. a game. It's a horse racing game called Home Stretch, and um, I I will play that anytime. I enjoy that. It's a lot of fun. It's a fast paced uh, <laughs> horse racing game where you. You have four races, and whoever can, uh, you know, maximize their their purse the most. Uh, it's just fun. It's a simple, fun game, and I love playing it. 
What's my all-time favorite R&R game? Right here. Let's see it. Name it. You're going to say it first. You got to say it first. Overthrow. Boom! Ah, look at that. (laughs) So the reason I'm mentioning Overthrow is because Overthrow is virtually out of print. But I think we should bring it back. And I think we should put it in a tin. It was a little in a little cardboard box. And I think we should do a like an anniversary edition or the 20th. I think it's the 23rd year of Overthrow, right? No, 21st year. 24th. Of Overthrow? 24. Okay. All right. So we, we should bring it up for the 25th anniversary. Wait a minute. <laughs> That'd be a great idea. That would be 21. That's what I said, 21. Yeah. But you were like 24. 23. In Oklahoma. 23. All right, so the twenty-first anniversary—that that sounds appropriate. It's yeah. old enough to drink. So yeah. Overthrown is a chaotic uh, stab them in the back card game. Uh, just a fun little game, also designed by Frank, but truly is a fun, fun game. And uh, I would like to reprint it, and uh, I'd like to change the artwork and put it in a, a metal tin. I think, I think it would do very well. So uh, that, yeah, that's that's those are my the favorites. Uh, a bit dated on it. Yeah, the artwork is definitely dated, but uh, while I love all of our games, um, for the most part, these are these are still my my top five. So, my uh, my favorite R and R game, and I'm I'm a I'm a very uh, I love simple games. I, I like, you know, I'll play the more complex ones all the time, but I I like simplicity, and I think that the best strategic game you guys have come up with is Pyramid Poker. Yep, I, I, I will play that any time, and it's always a different game. Yeah, yeah. And also, the, the people playing it make a big difference. Like, everybody's got their own strategies for it, so that, that's my all-time favorite. Yeah, I mean, and I, and I don't want to be, I don't want to mislead people. I will play Time's Up anywhere, anytime. Yeah, well, <laughs> I adore Time's Up. That's why I say other than Time's Up and Hanabi, yeah. because, yeah, yeah. Our, our Time's Up sessions are, are just a night of laughter. Yeah, so, but for me, I... Spike, I never, I never tire of it. I just, it's unique each time you play it, and uh, it's just a lot of fun. It's one of the games that we digitize and put on your, uh, your gateway. So um, I'm hoping um, that. Yeah, well, well, certainly the the problem with Times Up is is how much, uh, how how many times you have to pass information. That that's the biggest issue. So, talking about Spike. Just, <laughs> I was talking about Spike. Oh, okay. Spike, yeah. No, Go ahead, talk about Time's Up. Now, did screen, you say screen that? the moderator's not even listening to me. Yeah, no. Uh, what's your All name right, again? Track mine. I All guess right. my time is over. I don't even know why I'm doing here. He's not even listening to me. Excuse, excuse me, I'm talking here? <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, just in response to uh, one of our uh, guests here, Amanda, just so, just so you know, a lot of times the date on the box will actually predate the, the game coming out for a lot of different reasons, especially if it's released at the beginning Incorrect. of the year. Incorrect. So, so. On our games, the year that is actually secretly hidden on every box is actually the date that it was printed. All right. So, so Frank is, uh, is telling you a half-truth right now. and uh, No. Because we secretly put it on every game. Just like I secretly put hidden hunts in most games. Hidden hunts. By the way, there's some people really cracking on these hunts, let me tell you. Oh, yeah. I'm getting I, uh, a lot of responses lately. I remember your big fanfare. Was it Saltcom? Saltcom. Uh, yeah, that was yeah. when the first person found the obelisk. Okay. And, uh, Dan, it was you who was up there in the giant... Uh, the pharaoh headdress. <laughs> Which I still have not seen the video of that. I sent you the video. No, you did not. Yeah, I have it too. I, yeah, I thought we so sent, I sent it to you the video. Honestly, I've never seen it. I've never seen it. That's because you don't read half the stuff I send you. So, well, maybe if you said funny video, I would have read it. Yeah. All right. So, uh, Dex Douglas has asked about bringing games into Board Game Arena, or are you pretty much sticking with tabletop simulators? So, Dex Douglas, I'm going to actually answer that question because Double Exposure is taking point on getting the conversions done. The biggest issue with Board Game Arena is how much trouble it is to program in it. Playing in it is a breeze, absolutely, but actually programming in it. And all, all of our people who are programming basically tell us that if we have to do it in Board Game Arena, it's going to take like 10 to 100 times longer 
to get it done than in either Tabletopia or Tabletop Simulator. That may change in the future, but that's that's the way it is right now. Our compromise is going to probably be Tabletopia uh, just because, uh, you know, it, it's a little easier for people to play with in that sense. But there are things that can't be done in Tabletopia, um, you know, that just aren't, don't exist because Tabletop Simulator is the most robust of the programming languages. But Vinny, just let me add to that real quickly. Please. For the record, Spike and um, uh, Homestretch are in process to be put on Board Game Arena, but we put them in there last October, and I've heard nothing. Uh, so that may be why. So yeah. Yeah, yeah, go check on those. But otherwise, you know, we'll, we'll work on them in one of the other platforms. Well, I mean, I'm 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 I'm, I'm validating his point that it takes yeah. a long time. No, yeah. Um. Uh. So Iowa Stock Cars. Um, is asking, what does R&R actually stand for? Well, wouldn't you like to know? <laughs> That's the whole big hunt. So my There's understanding that is that you come up with a different answer each year. What's this year's answer? Mm, it's not a different answer each year. It's the same answer it's been for 24, 25 years. All right, so seriously, this is actually an Uber puzzle, right? Yeah, this is the Uber end-all, beat-all puzzle. This is the big one. This is the one with the biggest prize. Well, why didn't you explain to everybody what it is? That's what I was wondering. Basically, you figure out what R and R stands for, and if you're right, you just you know send it into us, call us, whatever. And if you're right, you win the prize, but which is one million dollars. Four years, <laughs> no one has won yet, and there have been many, many guesses. And I will tell you. If you really want to know what it is, find the clues and follow the path. And that's how you will get the right answer. Because and where can they find the clues? It's a treasure hunt. That's what it is. I built a giant treasure hunt over here. And where can they find the clues? Everywhere. Fifth time. They're all over. They're in the, they're found on the internet. I They're thought I saw it on the fly on Mike Pence's uh, Facebook. Yeah. Uh, there might have been one there. There, uh, there are many hidden within the hidden hunts of the games or in the games themselves. There, uh, look on the websites. Look on um, the websites. Websites. Are those on the internet. I didn't say the, the webs. I said the internet and the websites. That's correct with an S. And um, you can find it in. Clues were dropped in interviews. Uh, clues were dropped in videos that were made. There are clues that are slowly just just keep coming out like a river. Can now, you find them on a clue behind your head right now? <laughs> I'm sorry. There might be a clue right behind his head. Yeah, there might be. Look on that shelf carefully. There could be. Could could it be on a mouse? Could it be in a house? <laughs> That's doubtful. <laughs> um, Andy wants to know, uh, and it's not riddles and riches, right? That is the number one answer. That <laughs> There's two popular answers that you always hear, and they're both wrong. But that's definitely wrong. That was well, the other the one is rest and relaxation, of course. Yeah. Okay. Um, so Paul Inshaw wants to know who is the best Pichu player. Oh, clearly me. Stop. Oh, please. Who has the higher rating? Only because you've been playing all day during the pandemic while I'm working. Uh-huh. Uh -huh. Who was the one that posted, look at me sunbathing today? <laughs> with my lunch with my dog. <laughs> well, I, I don't know. I love I, the I, fact that I have the higher rating right now, just so I could say that. That's so funny. Wasn't your Paul. rating down to almost even a couple yeah. of weeks ago? Oh yeah, um, I, was, I was like below fifteen hundred for God's sake. But oh wow, has gone up, and someone has gone down. <laughs> I, I see. I see how that works. Yeah. After, so no one can read it. <laughs> oh, Andy actually just posted the link that you guys have for R and R's hidden treasure hunts. We have a link. <laughs> yes, uh, uh, I, I'm glad Where's to what? hear you. Oh, yeah. Yeah, Andy, which one? Some other suggestions for the name are Rhyme and Reason and Renzo and Renzo. Uh, I've heard those both before, but yeah. both wrong. 
Um, and yeah, at one curious. point said, I missed times up. We don't have enough people to do it really well. Yeah. Yeah, that's, that's the biggest issue is that it really plays better. <laughs> it, it really plays better with more people. Oh, yeah. You need a lot. So. Okay, folks, who else has some questions for Frank and Dan? We'll just uh, wait here for the... Uh, to the uh, peanut gallery. Um, Frank, you want to drop us any hints about some of the new games coming out next year? Mm, we have Mystic Paths coming out. That's the big one that we were That's, waiting. Yeah, I was waiting for you to, to say something about that. I didn't know if maybe it was a secret yeah, or something. Show you one of the minis from it. Oh, great, great visual. <laughs> well, listen, you were showing tokens with numbers on them as if that was new to the gaming yeah, industry. Yeah. Oh, look at the one! <laughs> Look at the one! <laughs> you guys all see this? This is Frank showing it. You guys all see this over here? See it? Look it's at the right thing. there in front of you! <laughs> you can't get any bigger! Look how big his hands are. God, you can tell you see is his big fat hands. Tell us about Mystic Paths, Frank. <laughs> uh, okay. Um, remember, remember how it plays? We basically, uh, it's a game, uh, kind of a kind of a deduction type game uh, for individuals, teams, or cooperative. Uh, you can play it any of those ways. It's uh, basically where you're trying to uh, escape the mystic forest and be the first one out in the fastest time. And uh, each time you're trying to move, you actually can't do anything. You have to have the help of everyone else. So you have, let's say, uh, a clue to give about landmarks that you see, and people have to figure out where you're talking about on the board from the single word clue that you're giving. But your single word clues are not great. They're all kind of... I I have to believe that he's touched his nose, and there's a there's a clue there. Yeah, I was th I was thinking that myself. Can we roll that back? Yeah. <laughs> uh, Andy, can you make note of the exact time that he touched his nose? Because the numbers on that are probably significant. <laughs> I will tell you though, there there is someone out there right now who has literally just solved several of the hidden hunts and has. Uh, managed to get not only the obelisk clue but uh several other clues as well yeah yeah we met him at uh, saltcon no it's no, no, this is this is somebody new someone, oh, this somebody new. Okay. has been on fire and they are literally getting they've actually won prizes that have, there are still lots of prizes to win and, and the grand prizes they get to take over r and r right i have never, open a glass elevator and... yeah that's basically you know but shh no <laughs> The, the, the funny thing is there are lots of prizes still available that no one has ever won because the, the, they've, been, they've never solved the, the hunt or not all the prizes have been taken. There were at least 10 prizes for the obelisk, including the obelisk itself, and there were some serious cash prizes. There was one guy that won a trip. There was uh, some people have won hundreds of dollars. Someone has won every one of our games. I mean, the prizes aren't always fantastic, but some of them are really good and worth a lot. <laughs> what a motivator! The prizes aren't really always fantastic, but sometimes they are. <laughs> win, you know, hey, oh, some some of the silly easy ones you might just win, uh, you know, a free game or some money. My favorite is the clue that you put in Panda Head. He solved that one today. He actually called and tried to solve that one today. But actually, to be honest, he didn't solve it. He's working on it. But that's the one he's working on. That's all that I can't tell the story then. No, you can't tell the story at all. That story just cracks me up about that one. But that's just one of many. I mean, there's so many, and I, and a lot of the people here will take a phone call and they'll be like, "What?" <laughs> because they don't know. <laughs> And then I'll have to call the person back and like, okay, I know what you're talking about. <laughs> uh, that's, you know, just shows how well you're managing them. I mean, yeah, so I'm obviously <laughs> keeping everyone up to date on that very well. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, Stacy actually got one of those calls. She's like, excuse me? What are you talking about? And 
he was like, I guess I, I've got the wrong. <laughs> right. <laughs> it was pretty funny. So hey. one of the things that I've talked to Dan and Frank about uh, for our audience here um, over the past couple of months is actually doing a podcast. Um, and uh, that was something we were throwing around. And then the gateway came up. And um, okay, so we decided to uh, invite them into doing this uh, video for the uh, first week or first two weeks of the gateway. Um, and I'm thinking maybe if we pick a topic each month and do a, uh, a live broadcast like this with Dan and Frank, we can have some interesting discussions about things around the gaming industry and other things. How many of you in the audience would uh, appreciate seeing them again next month on a different topic, you know, something specific, and just letting them at it? We'll wait for the overwhelming responses. Uh, Frank, there's, there's a hand coming up from your desk. I just they must want it. <laughs> we're on like a 10 second delay on the. Uh... No, we're on a 10 second delay on the technology, so. <laughs> All right, we got one sure. Yes, I'm enjoying these panels very much so. These have been very fun to watch. Keep coming. I think we've got what, about 9,000 people on right now? Is that. Wow, that's accurate? fantastic. Well done. Yeah. All right. So, um, yeah, I think, and, and, and Paul Inchow said absolutely, so that's good enough. Um, can, I, can I set the record straight? His name is Inchow? No, it's Inchow. Inchow? Yeah. It's Inchow. It's Inchow. It's Inchow. I was, in I was told, I was, I was calling him Inchow, and I was corrected. By All right, who? Paul, how do you pronounce your name? Ten second delay. Oh, Dan's come up with some subjects. I, I like the cooking Italian one. That's mine. Oh, please. It's not yours. Oh, please. Oh, say I like All right, Paul that. says Frank is right, so it is in Cal. Yeah, thank you. All right, so. All right, another point. Ding. All right, I'll go bow my head in shame somewhere. All righty. Um, so, uh, yeah, I actually think cooking Italian would be a great uh, theme for the next. Uh, we got to think about how we work that into uh, into gaming. Oh, you play uh, Mamma Mia. <laughs> okay. <laughs> that, that, that could work. Absolutely. I always love that All game. Right. All right. As we kind of wind down here, is there anybody else with any other questions for Dan or Frank? And while anybody's thinking about that, Dan, Frank, any closing comments? Um, you'd like to make about uh, oh anything in general, I guess. I just I hope everybody's staying safe. I hope everybody is uh, you know enjoying this time, this extra time with their families, and uh, I hope that you can get back to uh, a simpler time when uh, you know R and R was kind of born out of the love that Frank had for playing games with us, uh, all the siblings, and. You know, you, you have to look for the good in, in the bad time, and we're clearly in a really, really rough time. I, I think the pandemic is going to go on a lot longer than most people do. So, you know, keep keep talking to people, keep reaching out, you know, and uh, and keep playing games. Frank, before you go, the Sea Fox says, uh, Dan, so good to see you. Great to hear from you. Frank? Yes, yes, Vinny. Uh, your 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 final thoughts. My final thoughts. My final thoughts. Oh, uh, you know, I don't really have a lot of final thoughts because I'm always in the moment. I would say uh, stay safe. Um, I really hope that Dan will stop using a teleprompter. Um, <laughs> it's such a fuss. What a fuss. <laughs> you're always like this, looking now when you're talking. It's like. Because you talk so slowly, I'm like bored out of my mind. I'm like, like you were talking just Oh my now. god, look at that. There's dust on my desk. I should clean that up while Frank is talking. <laughs> no, I mean everyone stay safe, you know, and uh Dan said it very eloquently. I don't have to re repeat what he said, uh but uh I don't know. I don't well, really I think we've got our topic for your next uh your next video chat. Yeah, what is it? <clears throat> um, and, well, 
First of all, Andy says, you two yelling at each other for an hour is a show we all need. <laughs> what are you talking about, Andy? <laughs> yeah, Andy, are you trying to imply something here? But uh, I think an Italian cooking theme for uh, early November would be great. I will uh, work on scheduling that. Yeah, just, I'm, sure it isn't on I could share my recipe for some really cool Italian cookies. Oh, well, he does think, make Italian cookies, yeah. I think you need to like have you know stuff in front of you like Rachel Ray. And I could, I could do that. Yeah, yeah. You know, put a turkey into into the oven, pull it out <laughs> ten minutes later, it's done. Look at that! Isn't that beautiful? <laughs> All righty, so I uh, hope to see you guys soon on the Teach You game, and uh, it's been a pleasure as always. And folks, everybody uh, stay safe and sane from all of us here at Double Exposure and all of them there at R&R Games. Thank you very much. And all right, good, good night, night, everyone. Good night.